Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular VG tutorial, I am going to discuss what is package configurations and then how to configure your SSIS package using XML configuration. So this is my profile. I have 8 plus years of experience on Microsoft technologies mainly in SSIS and SQL Server. So today we will discuss what is package configuration and then how to set up XML configuration for an SSIS package. So you can think of package configuration as a kind of property and value kind of pair that you can add to your completed SSIS package and at runtime the SSIS package will actually read the values from the configuration file instead of reading it from the SSIS package itself. So for example when you are developing your SSIS package on the development server then maybe you can use the connection string of your development SQL server. So at that time once you are done with the SSIS package code then you can add the package configuration to the SSIS package and then you can copy the same SSIS package along with the configuration file to the production server and at production server you don't need to modify the value of the SSIS package I mean you don't need to modify the value of the connection string in the SSIS package instead you can open the configuration file and then you can modify the connection string in the configuration file so this way you don't need to touch your SSIS package and you can pass a different kind of value to, to your SSIS package through the configuration file. So this is why the package configurations are useful when you move the SSIS packages from one location to another location and when you want to execute your SSIS package maybe for different kind of servers and you just need to pass the name of the server and you want to execute it for different servers. So in those kind of scenarios you can use the configurations in your SSIS package. So there are different kind of package configurations available in SSIS. So the popular one is XML configuration and the SQL server configuration. However, there are environment variables as well, registry entry and parent package configurations as well. So in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to use an XML configuration file for an SSIS package. So without wasting time, let's jump to the demo. So I have already created this particular SSIS package and I'm going to add the XML configuration to this particular SSIS package. And you can download this SSIS package from dataplatformlabs.com slash resources and I will share the link in the description of this video. So before going to add the package configuration file, you need to make sure that the, your deployment model is package deployment model. Otherwise, you won't find the option to add the configuration file to the SSIS package. First of all, you need to make sure that it is package deployment model. Otherwise, if it is not the package deployment model, then you need to right click on the SSIS project and then you need to convert it to package deployment right now it is package deployment so that's why it's asking to convert it to project deployment however if it will be the project deployment model then you can convert it to package deployment model and once it's it's been converted then you can work on adding the XML configuration file so let me just uh, tell you a bit about the SSIS package in this particular SSIS package the value of the file that is going to load is coming from this particular SSIS variable file path. So values coming from this particular SSIS variable and at, at this particular location we have one more file, one more CSV file. So we have one more CSV file here as well. So we will change the value of the file from the XML configuration file. Okay. So as of now if you execute this particular SSIS package so it will load the data to a to this particular table test data table okay and then it will also log the file processed and the number of records loaded to this particular table tbl logs okay so right now if you run this particular query both tables are empty so let's let me just execute the ssis package so if i execute the ssis package right now so it will load the 30 records to test data table Actually test data table is refreshed every time whenever you run the package. So I run the package and it loaded 30 records to this table and then to the log table it logged that this particular file test data underscore one got loaded and it loaded 30 records. So now let me just add a configuration file and let me just try to change the name of the file from the XML configuration and then let's see what happens. Okay so let me go to the SSIS package. Stop the SSIS package. And then what we need to do is right click on the control flow and then click package configuration. So the second option is package configurations. Click on this 
and now here we need to click on enable package configurations okay and now click on the add button to add a configuration so the package configuration wizard will open and you need to click on next and now here you need to specify the location of the xml configuration file if your configuration type is xml configuration otherwise there are other options as well sql server and you know parent package and other options but in this particular case i am going to discuss xml configuration file so you need to provide the path of the xml configuration file otherwise you can store the path of the xml configuration file in an environment variable and you can create an environment variable on your development server and then assign the path of the xml configuration to that particular environment variable and when you will deploy your ssis package to different production server or some qa server so on that server as well you can create the same environment variable and can assign the path where your xml configuration file is situated so in this particular example i'm going to use the configuration file name so when you will be deploying your ssis package so you need to provide the same path on the server as well okay so let me browse the path so i'm just creating the configuration file in my ssis package folder itself so the extension will be .dts config and I can name it as uh, my config file. Okay, click save. Now you need to click next. Once you will click next, this is the window where you, you actually need to choose for which property or for, for which SSI variable you actually want to use the configuration options. So for example here, you need to select the connection string or the SSI variable value that you want to store in the xml configuration as a configurable property so maybe in under connection managers there is a connection manager localhost dot testing oldb connection manager so maybe you can you know store the value of the connection string or maybe the initial catalog i mean the database name okay and the server name in the xml configuration file but in this particular scenario i'm just going to store the value of the file path inside the xml configuration file so to store the value of the file path ssis variable what i need to do i need to expand the properties of the file path and then the and then from the properties i need to select the value property because i want to change the value of the file path inside the xml configuration file because right now it's loading the file test data underscore one and i can set it to test data underscore two as well now i simply need to click next and then maybe i can provide a configuration file name otherwise i can simply click finish click close so now i am done with configuring the xml configuration file for this particular ssis package and to open the xml configuration file simply right click here and then click open containing folder and this is my xml configuration file my config file dot dts config so right now it is configured to load the test data underscore one file however i want to change it to test data underscore two file so maybe i can open this particular configuration file with noted plus plus you may open it with any other text editor as well so this is the xml configuration file and here you can see so the value of the ssis variable file path is this particular value c files test data underscore one you know once you have copied your ssis package along with this particular ssis configuration file to your production server and if you want to load some different files so what you need to do you can simply need to change the value here like from one to two you can change it and then you can save your configuration file and once you are done with this then if you will execute the ssis package so you can see that the value in the ssis package is right now test date underscore one but when you will execute the ssis package instead of reading the value of these variables from the ssis package itself it's it will read the value from the xml configuration file because it has some configurations added to the ssis package so let me execute the ssis package and then if you go to the sql server and if you rerun this select query so you will see that now it loaded the second file test data underscore 2 and it loaded 20 records because the value in the configuration file was test data underscore 2 and not the test data underscore 1 so guys this is how we can use the xml configuration file to provide different value to your ssis package so in case if i change it to 1 again and then i save it 
and uh, now let me just rerun my SSIS package again so you will see now it will load the first file because it's going to read the data from the configuration file okay so guys this is how the XML configuration actually works and you can add the configuration file to each of your SSIS package and then can deploy it to production or some QA server thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button and do subscribe to our channel to see more videos and SSIS and other related technologies thank you so much